Thank you. Gracias. Hola, ¿qué tal, seleccionador? Muy buenas tardes. Soy Anton Meán. Hi, coach. I'd like to know if the, uh, if the, the, uh, the pair Nacho and Leno Mant, the way they played yesterday, it invites you to repeat uh, tomorrow uh, uh, since they function so well in such a complicated game as the other day. Good evening, Anton. I'm really happy with the performance of the players, of every player that played the other night against Croatia. And uh, obviously, I'm su super happy about the training that uh, the way the other players have trained. So I'm so happy about any of the four central defenders that I have. They they have proven to be at a very high level. It could be him. It could be anywhere anybody else. I'm really. I know. I totally rely on them. I know they're in a really good moment. All four of them. So any of them could play tomorrow. Okay. Next question, please. Tomorrow, if Spain wins, they will be classified as first of the group. If, if it gets a draw, it will be very close to being that uh, last 16. Do you think of getting a draw, or are you going to try and go out there to try and win the game? Without any doubt, we want to win. This game is the most important game for us so far. So that's the only thing I think about. I know we go day game after game. I don't know who, who coined that sentence, but it's a very old one. We go game after game. It's a super important game against Italy tomorrow. So we, we'll see after that. We don't know. But the game to, at hand tomorrow is the most important team. And we play all games to win, all matches to win. I wouldn't know how to play a game in, other, in any different way or play and trying to draw. We'll go out there and try to win the game. What do you like the most about Italy? Well, it's a team that has very, uh, is very similar to ours. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's in, uh, it's changed the national team coach recently, young players. We have faced them in, before in the past in youth football before, namely in the under 21 championship that we won. We faced them too. We have, they have many players. I love how competitive they are. They are super competitive, great individual players, m many experienced players too, players who can play in this competition. It's almost like it we're looking in, in a mirror, actually. We are a growing team. We are a developing team. We are developing our sense of a, of a team. And we are working in cohesion. And they are working in, and they have great individualities as well. I think it's going to be a very complicated match tomorrow and a very even match tomorrow. We'll see the type of game we, we will see tomorrow. But I think it's going to be a very high level match. I'd like to ask you, how is Rodrigo Rodri feeling physically after he couldn't finish the game against Croatia? And to what extent are you conditioned? The fact that he saw a yellow card against Croatia, would you, would you be able to, would you want to speculate with that? Uh, no, thinking that the team could be classified for the next stage after the next game. Well, we'll see how the match goes. We want to have the best tools in order to try to win, of course. I'm not going to say who, who Rodri is or how important he is for us. He's super important. And, you know, it just de we depends what the circumstances are and we can think about a different thing or what to do, but we haven't spoken about that at all. Because what we need to be is we need to focus into competing and playing good football and doing everything on the pitch in order to, to beat a great rival tomorrow. Yes, and he's, he's fit. He's fit for, for contention. The whole squad is training normally, so everyone is in perfect condition for tomorrow. They, they, we are, have already started with M match day two, and can it's been proven that? The, do you agree that Spain is the one that one of the teams that has played has played better so far? 
Well, you know, I, I don't know what other people will say up, uh, outside our environment. Uh, all the opinions have been positive so far, but we need to, we always have room for improvement. We need to be humble to try and grow and keep growing and keep competing. And I've seen other teams, very good teams, not necessarily in these few games, but this is not about one game. It's, it's a long distance race in the end. We know the potential of these national teams because we've seen them in the qualification stage in different games. So the potential that France has, Germany, England, Italy, we know, we know them perfectly. You know, I, it, it doesn't really, or Portugal, it doesn't matter how they played in one match day one, although I liked, I liked them all to be honest. So we, with, from this uh, being p humble position, will keep working and working and working in order to try to improve. Okay, next question over here. It, okay, then we're going to switch to the next gentleman in front of you. In this tournament, for the first time in six years, in four or five uh, tournaments, oh, we've seen the Spanish team playing slightly differently. We play with deeper uh, wingers, etc. Is that a new Spain? Is that a new style? For, uh, for Spanish football? Well, we try to, uh, in any circumstances, we try to be superior to our rivals. We try to interpret every phase of the game, every situation of the match. And we have different players in order to adapt to different registers. Uh, obviously, it, everything, uh, we have to be aware of, the, of our players' characteristics. <laughs> And there is an essence, there is a philosophy, of course. We have to control our football, a passing game, combination game. But at the same time, the times have been changing for the last few years. Football has changed into a bit faster transitions, etc. You know, we don't need to, we don't want to allow our rivals to go back and we try to attack maybe in a faster way, perhaps. So we try and make the most of the circumstances. It's not a different style. I don't think it is a different style, but what we want to do is to create a style that helps us okay. win. I think we have some audio issues. Nevertheless, we're going to uh, continue with the press conference. Over there, next question, please. Hola, Luis, aquí, Edu Castelao del Mundo. Hi, Luis. I take it that you saw the Croatia game, the game against Croatia after playing it, of course, and I would like to ask you about those positive feelings. Uh, what have you felt after you watched it again in a more calm way? Have you taken any conclusions, anything that you didn't see when you finished the match? Yes, of course, the post-match analysis, uh, you know, with uh, calm analysis after the match, etc. They give you sometimes a different perspective that you, what you can see on the pitch. The feeling I had on the pitch after, at the end of the first match, uh, was very good. I, had, um, I walked off with a very good feeling, but the most important thing about the different reflections that we made is that it demands us to keep growing in every aspect of the game and every aspect of our football. There is room for improvement in all, in everywhere, in all aspects of our game, because the new games are going to be and going demand are going to demand that we up our game every time. You know, so the, starting there, that we need to improve. We have great potential for, in, for improvement, and we are really confident because our players are really convinced that that is the way to go. We need to keep improving and keep growing. I wanted to ask you about Pedri, and you said all the players are fit. 
but what, are, what do you think about Pedri uh, at a physical and at a footballing level? What do you expect from him tomorrow? Well, Pedri is improving with every uh, training session. Every time he has a chance, he, he feels more confidence. I'd like to insist in something I said in the past, which is... Uh, I said Pedri needed to find Pedri again, and he's doing that, and that's exactly what we need. We need a player with his with full self-confidence and to be able to show his talent. We expect a lot from him because he's one, for me, one of the best players in the world, and I'm convinced that it's a great opportunity for him to show himself again as the great footballer that he is and that we all admired and I think he's going to prove it yet again. Good afternoon, coach. If you go through your trajectory as coach in this kind of short tournaments like the Olympic Games or Euros under 21, etc., uh, I think you sh you normally change your left backs, oh, sorry, your full backs in, in different games. But of course, you haven't played with the national, you haven't directed the national team so far. What do you think? Why do you think that is the case? Uh, uh, do you think that youth players have different conditions? Are they more mature now? In the, well, when you, you make those decisions, are not out of a whim. They're always based into, in a study, in a reflection. Uh, you study the opponent and you, you study the needs that the, your team has in order to attack or in order to counteract the, 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 the opponent. So you never, we never do anything out of a whim. We, we always do it because we think it's the right moment to do so because for different reasons so I don't I didn't know that particular detail but uh, I don't think it's the position I thought I probably thought that it was what the team needed back then at the time so we will see tomorrow if we change the fullbacks or not but of course I can guarantee you that in any case right now and and the whole time that sort of decision is always made after a deep analysis, an intense analysis, and always thinking what's best for the team, of course. Hi, Luis. You said after the Spain versus Croatia that if Fabian was not called Fabian, he would probably have, you know, he would take the headlines. We spoke about him much more. Spalletti said today that Spalletti Spain has absolutely everything. Do you think that seen from the outside, do you think Spain has, is valued more and these players are valued more abroad? Well, Spalletti is a great coach, but uh, he's not going to, to make anything weaker. I, I've always uh, value our players. I always said that I wish I could have every player, every Spanish team in my uh, squad. I know them. I know how good they are. I've known Fabian for years, and he's a top uh, world-class player. Fabian is a player that has uh, he, that ha to be a world star. He's a different kind of player with a footballing potential, a very um, an amazing footballing potential he's showed it in every team and in every national team in every youth team he's been I'm, I, I celebrate the fact that he's called Fabian Ruiz because I can count on him and he's one of us so I would love him to have this sort of recognition which uh, sometimes we do find hard to do in Spain but I think it's something to do with Spain a lot, which is we normally value what comes from abroad more than we value our own. And some of our players okay, are world-class players. Three questions among those. We are having a question uh, remote. So this gentleman over there, yes. 
¿Qué tal, mister? Buenas noches. Daniel Chanona para Televisa Univision. Eh, Quiero preguntarle con la historia I'd like to ask you about the history of uh, uh, confrontations with Italy. It was, the, the, it was a beast. Uh, Italy was always like a black beast for Spain, but it changed in 2008. What are your chances for you meeting in Italy? Well, it, Italy is a classic in every uh, international competition, and I, uh, throughout my trajectory, I have faced Italy many times in many different games, in friendlies and in competition. It's a classic game against uh, Spain v Italy, and I think it could be, a, it could, you know, very easily be a final of the uh, European Champions or the World champ or, or, or the World Championship. They have great footballers, great tradition, great teamwork, a culture. Uh, a media culture around football, which is exceptional. And it's, it's one of the great uh, national teams that have been created, almost created to compete at this level. I'm sure we will see a great show and a great match tomorrow, and I will hope to be uh, up to the standard of this great competition, and we were gonna try to do, we're going to try to do our best, and we'll do our best in order to have a chance to win the game tomorrow. Okay. This gentleman over here. Thank you. Gracias. Hello, coach. I'd like to ask you about Morata, since the, he had he was he kind of limped off again after the game uh, uh, with uh, Croatia. Do you think it's time for players like José Orayoce to have minutes? Well, Morata is perfectly fit. Yes, uh, they could, could be them, but could be any other player. With our game plan, with that we have already studied, and we will reinforce tomorrow. We'll go through against. Uh, uh, we'll go through it tomorrow again. We will contemplate all the different scenarios and to bring in different players in different moments. And we know that we are going to play with eleven players. And. Uh, and, and uh, we in every play in every match in the um, in the qualification stage with 40 percent of the goals were scored in the qualification uh, stage we have scored from the bench off the bench so independent I mean it doesn't really matter if you are in the first 11 or you come in later every player is important and every place every player has a function to do on the pitch I'm super confident about them because I know they're gonna perform at a great level tomorrow to try to get a question through remote connection, so we have some journalists connected. Now it's time to raise your hands to ask a question to Mr. De La Fuente. Por favor, please, per favore. All right, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, let's go, last question now yes. in the room. Over there, please, thank you. Hola, seleccionador, soy Ferran Martínez de Mundo Deportivo. Spalletti, a few hours ago, just said, or reminded us of joking that they dress in our money suit, but they are ready to stain that suit if if they have to. What kind of what, what kind of Italian squad do you expect tomorrow? A more traditional uh, Italian team or a more offensive Italian team as they've been playing of late? Well, like I, as I, in the same way that I defend the Spanish uh, football, I defend uh, the Spanish um, fashion, you know, so I'm really happy with our sponsors and I think we are perfectly ready because of the characteristics of our players and the characteristics of our team. We are ready to play in the mud if we have to and play anywhere on the pitch, off the pitch, everywhere. We are ready for everything. We know the kind of match that we are going to see. They're not going to surprise us because we know the, the, the kind of competitors they are. We know them really well, and we have to be at a similar level to them in intensity, etc. Otherwise, there will be no match. You know, We have to give the best version of ourselves in order to have a chance against Italy tomorrow. Thank you. Now we're going to host the man of the match from the Spanish team against Croatia, Mr. Fabian Ruiz.
Welcome, Fabian. Buenas. Okay, so we keep exactly the same routine. Raise your hand. Pop one, please, over there. First question. Hello, Fabian. Hello. I wanted to ask you, how would your name, how would you be called in order to be valued like a foreign player? No, but it's my, it's my name. I'm proud of my name and of being Spanish. Microphone. Incredible Ameris Sport Italia. Ciao Fabian. Tu hai avuto modo di conoscere, insomma. Hi Fabian. You got to know Spalletti, you played under him, and I wanted to ask you what do you expect from him with this Italy side, and whether De La Fuente has asked you about Spalletti and whether you're a little bit disappointed that uh, ultimately uh, Napoli didn't have a great season. No, I think they've studied Spalletti very well. I didn't have to tell them too much. We know that he's a great head coach. He's a head coach who likes to build out from the back and keep possession. And he's also a coach who likes to press very high. They'll try and pinch the ball off the opposition because they have a number of players who are quality footballers. So I expect Italy to play as they ordinarily do, an aggressive quality side that work well on the ball. And I think it'll be a very tough match. We need to make sure that we stay focused right from the first whistle because Italy really are a top side. Ask the question with the microphone. If we can't translate the question, we can't translate the answer. No, on the contrary. I was delighted that Napoli won the Scudetto. I'm very fond of Naples as a city and for the fan base. I've got a lot of friends in Naples. I was delighted for Spalletti and all of the players that won the Italian domestic title. Please, over there. Thank you. I wanted to ask you, what would it mean for you, for you and your players, if you crowned and if you won this Euro, how would it mean, what would it mean to you to be the first uh, national team in the, in the history to win two, uh, and win four, and four Euros, four editions of the Euros? Well, it will be... We are in an incredible moment. We're going to try and fight for this, for, to try and lift that trophy on the 14th of July. We are working in order to keep doing a good work. And at the end of the tournament, we'll, we'll hopefully, we'll try and be there to lift that trophy. But we will see how it goes. On this side, yeah, over there, please. Thank you. Hi, Fabian. I wanted to ask you, you have now Luis Enrique as coach in PSG. We have Luis de la Fuente and the national team. You ended up playing in for both of them. What has improved? What have, how have you improved in order to keep, to keep playing for Luis Enrique and for de la Fuente now? How have, you, how have you improved? Well, I've said it many times. They're very similar uh, coaches. They both like to keep possession. They, have, they like uh, high pressure as well. So it's true that with Luis Enrique, I, I, last few games, with this, in the last few months with Luis Enrique, I couldn't make it here. I uh, couldn't make to them. I didn't make the national team, but I have him at, at PSG now, and I'm really happy about that. And I'm back in the national team. I didn't play much at first, but I tried to improve. I tried to did to do what he wanted me to do in order to get my place in the first eleven. In the end, I got I got it. And with Luis de la Fuente, well, he has put his faith in me, and since the, the Spanish youth teams, and I have to be very grateful. I have to show my great to him and I'm grateful again to him that he's brought me here and I hope we can do great things together. Hola, Fabian. Buenas noches. Hola, Elena Condis de la Cadena Cope. 
Do you think Spain can be considered one of the great favorites to this Euros after seeing the debuts, maybe not so convincing debuts of great teams like France, Italy, uh, sorry, France, England or Portugal? Well, I don't know if we are one of the favorites or not. We don't see ourselves as favorites. But we have a lot of confidence in our potential, and we know we have the potential to be up there in, in the final, perhaps. So we will do anything we can on the pitch, and we'll do everything possible to make that happen. So if we make it to the final, then maybe I can say that we are favorites or not. But there is a lot to do. There are many very good national teams. It's very difficult to win a game and to win a tournament. So we'll try to do our best in order to reach that final. Next question, I think you're going to need the translation, Fabian, the lady over there, wait for the mic. Hi, Fabian, question in English um, from IG Sports. Um, earlier today, the Italy team do see uh, your teammate Yamal as a threat, and in the meantime, still a very young man, we heard even he even brought his homework here. So what's it like as a teammate? Well, we all know what a great player Lamin Yamal is. He's only 16, he, although he doesn't show it on the pitch. But yes, I think he is one of the great strengths that we have. Uh, a player that is extremely vertical, extremely good in the 1v1. We know how important he is for us. We hope that we can, he can play a great match tomorrow and he will give us, hopefully, some options in to try and win the game. This Italy uh, has, is, the, is, the, uh, is still the championship. Is the, they won the championship in the last Euros and, of course, is one of the main favorites. How do you see this uh, in Italian national team? Do you think they have lowered their level compared to the last Euros? Well. Uh, obviously, they won the last Euros. We know the kind of players that Italy has. We know that they compete in every tournament. They, we know it's going to be a very tough game tomorrow if we look at their players one by one. We know how important and they are and, how, and the quality they have. I think it's going to be a very even game. They are a very intense, aggressive team with a, a lot of tactical uh, ability and we have, they have a lot of quality as well with the ball. The coach likes to have poten uh, possession and maybe in, in previous tournaments, it, Italy was not characterized by playing possession football, but they do now, and I think it's going to be a very even match. And in the end, well, as for the favorites, I will be able to say at the end of the tournament, of course, because there are great national teams here, and anyone can reach that final. We've started, people have, are talking about um, the evolution of the style in uh, uh, of, the, uh, of Spanish football. You as a midfielder, do you agree with that? That Spain's style has evolved, has it changed compared to, to the famous kind of tiki-taka Spain and, and combination and passing game? Well, the style is uh, similar. We like to keep possession and to have the ball. Spain is characterized by quality players who want to have possession of the ball, but this our coach insists in uh, being a bit more vertical now and trying to get uh, to the opposition half uh, a bit quicker. And we, when we are in the final third, try to finalize the play with a shot or with a cross. We, 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 we do that a lot in training. So we, when any time we, every time we are near the area, we might try our luck on goal. So uh, every time we'll see an opportunity, we'll try and take it. And with the time that we've been with Luis de la Fuente, maybe we have seen that a bit more often on the pitch. Uh, Germany's 
and draw with Croatia, does it kind of uh, uh, pave the way a bit more? And knowing that not losing that match tomorrow could be beneficial. Well, to be honest with you, we don't think about other teams' results. We will tr we try to win every match every time we put the Spain shirt on. We try and win. We tr go out there to try and win. Players walk on the pitch. We always want to win. We don't look at what the opposition does or what other teams do. So it's important that we give everything on the pitch and we know it's important to get the three points against Italy tomorrow because it could mean a ticket to the next stage. You have played in different countries, you won a lot, but I don't know if it's it, if it's a, say, a different feeling to score with Spain in a Euros. Have you gotten any special messages and special calls? Do you have a special feeling when you scored with Spain? Yeah, oh, every time I've, I've put on a Spain shirt, it's a different feeling. Every time you go out there on the pitch and you see, and you see yourself with that shirt on, it's a different feeling. And scoring in the Euros, it's amazing. I got so many messages from everybody and all my friends. I don't score many goals, so when I do, I get a lot of uh, congratulations, etc. So I'm really happy that I could score with my, uh, for my country in such an important competition, and I hope it's not my last goal. Going to go for uh, the last three questions. Okay. Knowing your past in Serie A and in Napoli, and knowing that you have ex-teammates, uh, uh, etc., is it more special for you to play against Italy? Do you, have a, do you feel differently facing Italy tomorrow? Well, I think every time I go to Italy or play against Italy, it's always special because, uh, you know, uh, I, I really love the country and my teammates. I'm very fond of the country and very fond of my teammates. It's a very uh, important match for us and it's very special for me too because I'm going to be able to face ex-teammates, etc., and, of course, the coach that was, I played under him as, as well, and that's also special. I have very, uh, very uh, good friends there. I'm, like I said, I'm very fond of Italy, and I hope I can, I can walk out of the game tomorrow with the good memory of having won that match. Following up uh, with the debate of valuing uh, foreign players rather than local players, some people have, they have, we've seen this comparison that if Fabian was Portuguese, he would be like Vitinha, your teammate, and we would probably value you more if you had been born in Portugal. I don't know if you spoke about it with Vitinha, if you heard that, what do you think of that comparison? And what do you think about what we do in Spain? Do we value uh, foreign players more? Well, I just found out about that. I didn't know about that comparison. But I'm proud to be Spanish, like I said before, and carrying my name. I just invite every Spaniard to try and value what we have in our country. And, and, and think of the importance of the things we have in Spain as, as a country. We have many good things in Spain as a country, like I said, and some... And if, if you ask about any of our, of our players outside Spain, I think they are very much valued. You know, I invite, I would like to invite everyone to value the players we have in Spain as much as we value foreign players, because we're not only undervalued, uh, like, like you said, but I think Spain supports us in every way and every Every time we go to a different country and we go to any country in Europe, we have the fans supporting us and we value that a lot.